Hello to all and welcome back to more Absolutely Killed, an Ultimate Doom episode released in 2016 by Riot, aka known on YouTube as Digital Scope. This is CAC Home 1 and today we will be continuing with Map 5 Battery Park or more precisely episode 1 map 5 battery park still played line from a pistol start now I thought batteries meant there would be cells because I usually think of cells as batteries when it comes to ammo but apparently Riot has told me that that is not the case here so I wonder what to expect so immediately the music and this texture give me a, vi a vibe of slow of dispel. But it looks like we're dropping down in the hole pretty quickly, so I'm not sure how long that'll last. But this certainly looks like Inferno and not like the Shores of Hell, that's for sure. Not to mention it uses a music track that is not used in the Shores of Hell either. Okay, this is perhaps some phone or perhaps thy flesh consumed as well. No longer looking much like slow of this spell. That was just a Okay. I am getting hit by a lot more a lot of stuff to dodge. And two good hits from the Baron of Hell is gonna kill me. I think that med kit there was pretty useless if you're pistol style thing. But it might not be if you're coming in continuously, espe especially because map 4 was intentionally low on health. Okay, those Barons are gonna serve as turrets more than anything else. I'm guessing since I see a rad suit, the blood is going to be damaging. Oh, and they can, the imps can teleport in back here too. I could just stand here projectile dodging, but I don't know how far that's gonna get me, and there seems to get to be plenty of projectiles. Let me be a little bit more daring of a Catcomb 1 here. Okay, all of a sudden, four te three teleport pads appeared, but they're not teleports. I guess I'll shoot- oh! Okay, the monster teleport those. No. Oh. Still getting pretty flat, Tio. Oh, I can connect to the next island. Almost like I'm doing some island hopping here. Oh, that's. Did I see Almo and the teleport. I'll go ahead, grab the armor, and race to the teleport. I don't know if that was worth it without the rad suit, but whatever. Oh, there's a switch on this island. And the teleport pad spawned in some monsters. I definitely think this level is a little bit more thigh flesh consumed than it is in Fono at this point. Though an argument could be made for either. And a bridge to the next island. Which gives us a chain gun. Still nothing resembling anything I call batteries. Oh, 
that only doesn't that uh, it looks like I also need to find this switch in order to be able to potentially make it to the next island. Nope, I can't get to the next island at this point. Oh, that wasn't a shoot switch after all. We just watch everything fly on by. Oh, now I can get to the next island. Okay. It's Island Hopping Doom Edition! I guess music-wise it's more like Perfect Patrick's music, which is also a level where you want to kind of constantly be on the move for a while. This thing looks like the last island. And we're getting slacked by tomatoes on the side as well. Of course, true island happened would have you teleporting from one to another. Oh, I heard the unmistakable roar of a cyber demon. He's right there and... Almost like there's some castle or ramp house that those imps are on. You gotta be careful to flip the switch fast and not eat the rocket. Which gives us even more masters trying to find the destination on our island. And it looks like Riot made so we cannot go back to an earlier island unless we fall in the blood and use a teleporter and it doesn't look like he gives us that much health to do that with there's a new switch okay so these if we lower these tall pillows and and reveal a switch and there's always more masters coming into fight while we're waiting for that switch to appear Uh oh no! I did not want to fall in the blood. Oh, at this point, even if I fall in the blood, I can't go back. And I'm just yeah. I teleported the Keiko demon, but got flacked by all the other monsters. Even if I can fall in the blood here, I can't get back to the stout anymore, or almost the stout. Can't get back to the stout as soon as you fall down in the hole. Okay, that's a red teleport path, so it's probably our teleport instead of a man's stuff. Is it gonna be... Are we gonna get to teleport the cyber demon? He's got to be in the right position for us to even have a chance. Because that cyber demon has a larger range to roam about than... No, it's probably gonna take us to that teleport or down. The cyber demon can't even go there. And I'm almost out of ammo, so I have no choice but to take the teleporter. Oh! No! It took us to an invulnerability field, which, looking on the map, is just to the east of the cyber demon, so I think that'll be much appreciated. Whoa! Yeah, we need the your rocket launcher to kill you. Hoping I'm not killing the cyber demon prematurely. I mean, I don't know if I get to store those those ramp outs of the castle or not, or if they're just decorative and to hoist enemies. What I do know is I'd like to give the cyber demon his death before my invulnerability runs out, and that didn't happen. So let me try again. I would think I'd have enough time with an invulnerability.
don't want to miss rockets. I want to hit him point blank as much as possible. Because I really don't have any good dodging. I, do. I don't want to spend rockets on other monsters. Oh wait, there's the exit sign there. If only I can get there. And that is it. The lamp pouts are just decorative. Okay, well. Well, once you fell down the hole initially, aside from the fact that you could pause in front of the invulnerability sphere, that was non-stop action with no respite. I'd... say it could have gone on a little bit longer, but it doesn't need to either, and I... like the level. So let's... try and get in some levels from a couple other wads, too. We are gonna be now visiting the ugliest three textures in the Doom universe once again with 50 Shades of Grey Tall and we will be picking up from Map 4. And map four of Fifty Shades of Grey Tull, which once again we see all every allowed texture right from the very beginning, is called the Alphan Zone, which is, and it was designed by Alfonso, contain a gauntlet of just 65 monsters, but I know that Alfonso tends to not make easy scenarios, and might have been the basis of a megawatt pinch he made a couple years later that is also called the Alf Alphan Zone and has no fewer than 50 levels in it, but that's not the subject of this video. The subject of this video is this seemingly simple 65 master gauntlet but how simple will it actually be we let me check one thing okay map one i don't see any door track here so there is door track in the first room here but from the beginning not only two of the three textures are visible I'm just doing this out there. Oh, map 2 all three textures are visible from the beginning. Because I know in map 3 I'm looking at nothing but a bunch of bunch of door track. Map 4 once again, it seems in the evens all the textures are visible as soon as you open the level so far. <laughs> And I forgot until Digital Eidoscope, or Riot, commented on it that Fire Blue is infamous for show for slowing streams, streams down, presumably because it's an animated texture. And also reducing compression rates on videos. I I can't say I was happy to have to grab all three of those med kits so early. Is this gonna be another map where it's difficult to find a... to not be it to really not be under pressure? Okay, blue torch by the... Blue torches predictably signal a blue key door. The autos do sometimes. Sometimes there are different or two different autos that use roughly the same strategy to convey mission objectives. And blue torches in a lightened texture, but in the lightened sector by a fire blue wall texture is was pretty easy to tell me that's a blue door and this fire blue texture is pretty easy to tell me that was a lift. There are some norms although I've seen doors also be sometimes I've seen the autos use the door track texture to be a door or a lift. 
But I think one of the wonderful things in this wad is giving it to community that there is no there is no complete standardization and you never just know what you're going to have in the next level to indicate objectives even if sometimes they end up being about the same. So you always have to entertain the possibility in theory that a level's going to have something to convey the objectives that I haven't seen so far. This so far isn't the meanest I've seen out of our fans though, but it's how to the south of Megalith's Map 3 and that turned into a very difficult later portion. Okay, that's probably an ordinary door not requiring a key and we've got a... Uh, what I don't think we saw in Map 3, a use of the sky texture as the floor, which is perfectly allowed and even encouraged in this environment. I mean, if you, re if you don't remember, the very first room of Map 1 has the sky texture being the floor. That's probably gonna be, no, that's probably a, f yeah, that is a door just looking on the auto map and the color of the line, but it's a locked door that's not a key, so. Okay, was worried the sky would be a damaging thought. Thankfully, it isn't. That's a red door. But let's take care of the more dangerous turret first. His shots go a lot faster and do a lot more Uh-oh. I didn't want to see a wall though. Oh. oh. Not much dangerous behind it. Just some hit scanners that we have room to deal with. Oh, they're not as low on ammo as I thought because I have a chain gun. Oh. Okay. Looks like I've got to cross that area. Still waiting in this wide for room that uses fire blue, that uses door track as its primary texture for the entire room. Find out how a way to make that look good. I mean, so far we are looking at basically what digital Idoscope wrote in his review for the first five levels. They're solid Doom levels that use the, that follow the restriction and don't sacrifice looking decent as a result of it. And of course have to deal with some of the challenges of objective communication that wouldn't be in a regular level and seem to have done so pretty successfully so far. Still, these levels were we textured to regular textures and they could, all of these first levels so far could fit in any XYZ community project. Provided that community project doesn't have a restraint that these levels do break, of course. Man, got to get the chain gunner down or he's gonna pelt me really quickly. Oh, there's another chain gunner somewhere. It's gonna be very hard to die when I can't see where all the hit scan enemies are. I have 13% health and there's a hit scan enemy probably on the lower level that I can't see where he is. 
But do I really think I'm gonna survive an Alfonso map? And just as I was about to say the word deathless, there comes a self-fulfilling prophecy! And again, better wait for that fireball to just pass. Oh, well I need to remember. Okay, I need to remember two things. Wait for the fireball to pass, and after the fireball that passes, the Keiko demon who swagged it at me is still there. Watch the two Keiko demons. Videos I'll take my first death exi exactly no no different from a millisecond before I was about to say the word deathless. Why would when would fate have it any other way? I can get those big can get past those barrels and maybe save them for later use. Yeah, if I can get the revenant up near them. They're gonna try and storm towards me. They've got to come by the barrels. But there's a monster black line, meaning they cannot. No, I doubt there's a monster black line, but I have to be all. I have to be by the barrels myself in order for the revenants to travel that far in most cases. So I guess that's a few more revenants than I have the ammo to deal with. Well, careful. Don't get. Yeah. I was stuck between there for another second. I was. This might be a more of a flight than a fight here. Oh. Nice. Nice secret, Dell. Glad I found it. I could probably teleport back for well, so the candles indicate a secret. Oh no, a teleporter. Candles indicate a teleport. Four candles. Fair enough. The consequences of falling into the void here seem entirely nil. You get nothing, you lose nothing. Oh, I do kind of look how it, how this texture is scrolling. So if you look in the center, it's almost like you almost have the impression of going along like a Ferris wheel or something. If only the fire blue was scrolling as well. Or merry go round. Okay, I think it's pretty obvious that a fire blue texture, a tiny fire blue window like that is gonna be a switch. It's probably gonna open the door that I couldn't open, but didn't need the key. And I have to. Whoa! We have an out vial! And that means the Arachnotrons might not be the best thing to be spending my ammo on. So I do have to kind of kill this one to make progress. Twenty rockets to handle him. Whoa! Whoa! Now Alfonso's being mean without traps. Three out vials. Completely. And are the revenants teleporting in there? Well. Yeah, what I thought. The revenants are all gone here and they're teleporting in near the out vials, I presume. Oh, well, a lot of them found the way to the merry-go-round, almost merry-go-round area instead. However, that's an invisible wall that they can fire through, so I'd better revisit that area and actually kill the revenants, or else I am gonna just be getting... I need to be able to focus on only the out vials here, and not on the fact that I'm get. Maybe I can. This is complete cover. 
However, I also need my rockets to aim properly. That's easier said than done. Can I see the area from a different angle that might have better rocket aiming? Yep, it's getting into awkward fan zone now. Awkward, awkward fan zone. Short for awkward fan zone. A fan zone awkwardness zone. Oh, get in the, get in the zone. A fan zone zone. The only thing that seems possibly reasonable to do at this point is maybe teleport to that almost merry-go-round thing again. Well, I might be able to te execute some telefrags and make that teleport be a little bit less useless if I can get the revenant into exactly the right spot, but that might also be tough to pull. They have to be exactly in the spot. I could also just do it by trial and error and... The thing about Teleflags is I need to con- they will, they will really help me conserve some ammo. I'm not exposed to the out vials here. No, no matter how I go on this teleport, no, those set up to be very difficult to teleport these. I think I'll go out to the outer area and see if I can get a better angle on the monsters that actually matter. Seems I'll, but it seems I'll find those hell-bent on denying me a good angle. That isn't precisely what I wanted to do. I wanted to go by those candles. Nope, I'm just not gonna get a good angle, am I? Unless I find a way to rush past the out vials. Because this side is just a terrible angle to be at. With the height drop and everything, I did it! Rush past them! And now punish them for making me do that. But don't shoot rockets too close. Okay, well, I've, I'm gonna have to rush past them again, but those few of them now. Yeah, this level's a loop. And I really. I really have to time my race past the outfell, even when there are few of them. Because getting snagged is not difficult! Yeah, I only killed one of the out- I also need to make sure I don't- Two rockets, and then make sure I'm grabbing cover by that point. And also try and focus on the out rails over the revenants as much as possible. And walking into this dark tunnel, is the exit. Yup! That was a mean level. An area that got used more than once and then I guess an Alphan zone literally that got more used more than once and it got increasingly dangerous too. Fun little stuff. So for a third feature of this video we are going to do some testing for Steve Duff, or Steve D for short, with one of his Amiga demo party maps. And before I move on to the two most difficult maps of Amiga demo party that I, of the seven that he has sent my way, those are Heat, Mizzle, and Heartbeat. The H's are hot, man! We have a level called Beneath Hell that is actually for ultimate doom not hell beneath and who knows maybe because he didn't want it to begin with an H E I'll to see how difficult this one is it doesn't begin with an H E though 
because the second world begins with an H-E, but the name of the level doesn't. This is, though, as perhaps expected, an Episode 4 Map 1 level for Ultimate Doom. With its name transposed worldwide. We have over a hundred monsters, and already situations that make episode four. Yeah, you didn't take long to pelt me down, Steve. This it's not just about playing careful when you're gonna. I don't know how even Demon of the Well manages to go peltless here. I mean, you're slacking me at. You're giving me no fewer than four hit scanners with a bunch of ground enemies right away. I guess retreating to be away from the hit scanners might be the best idea. And I'm out of ammo. Well, Steve's blood doesn't help. I grab a red key already. Which might not do me any good until it's in tandem with, with some other keys. Come on, fall. Drop me. And... The area is not sufficiently hit scanner free to... Nope, no way I'm surviving in that slime without... Better fall into a slime from an angle that gives me a rat suit. Unfortunately, even from the angles that give me a rat suit, it's not really much of a reprieve. I'm guessing my safest. If I can fall near one of those rockets, I'm. Okay, well, I need to thin the imps out here. Not on this side! Wrong place to fall! Is Steve not satisfied with my pelt count already? If he isn't, then I completely give up on satisfying him. Like, maps like his revolution map, you can play carefully and still not play wimpily. Maps like these, it is all up front and prior knowledge can be very much of the essence. That is a helpful secret though. However, I'm not ready to ride the lift. I'll stick with this lift. Ammo deprivation is real, man. Epic ammo deprivation is real. I think I was playing Elf Kill after my chat with him yesterday. In fact, this map probably only the seals the deal that I will play Elf Kill because. If he doesn't call this ammo tightness to some extent, then I do want to know what he does call ammo tightness and survivalist play. See, Vatchel is a... Despite not reaching, despite not releasing an episode replacement like he did in Shotgun Symphony for episode one, Steve's actually got a relatively reasonable roster of episode four maps. This one, Elf, Elf Kill, and two levels of Ultimate Doom in name only that. Despite the fact that it's a name only, they do follow, look to follow at least a loosely episode 4 theme.
In fact, he said this level was awful to Ultimate Doom and name only. But that must have been a really, 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 really long time ago. Because E4 and 1 of Ultimate Doom and name only was designed by Bruce. And that was done a very, very long time ago. Like in 2013 or 2014. And I've at no point seen any signs that Bruce was thinking about giving up his slot, but maybe he was at some point. I didn't file, I didn't follow the thread all the way. Maybe at some point he was think of thinking of dropping his map out of the project. I don't think he shouldn't on that extent, and glad he didn't because his maps in Doom 2 in name only, well, not especially remarkable, well, some of the better ones from a gameplay standpoint. Of course, that's nothing against Steve at all because this would make a great map and ultimate Doom in name only if a bit hectic for a project that doesn't specifically focus on hectic maps like Amiga Demo Party does or because I haven't said it yet the full name being grinning like an undertaker called the Amiga Demo Party of Doom Help Steve is grinning a lot while he's watching me test these maps because they own me pretty well. Oh, not only do I get the does that switch reveal a trap, I can't escape either. It's a lock and set piece and something makes me think think I need more health to deal with it. Especially when I need to analyze where all those hit scan hits are coming from. Where are you? I guess if this level was to be offered to Ultimate Doom in name only, the idea of hell beneath is probably that there is slime underneath all the walkways. Still, was it really awful as E4M1? Because as I mentioned, that is Bruce's E4M1 is like the oldest map submitted to Ultimate Doom in name only, or one of the oldest at least. And did I just put myself in the soft stack? Well, if I can fall into the lava and get out the. Did I put myself in certain death? Because he's fine. No, I didn't. There was a hit scanner who had been. Picking away at my blood for so long, you deserve to die. Oh, and there's another hit scanner. The both of these have hit scanners that you sometimes can't see depending on the angle you're looking at. This might even be a candidate for the toughest Amiga demo party map so far. Despite the fact that there's no only. Despite the fact there's an ultimate Doom map, no less, and there are no Doom 2 enemies. When I asked him to rank the Amiga, Amiga Demo Party map from easiest to hardest, this boy, I only saw the Doom 2 maps listed, so I don't know where he thinks this one would fit in the ranking, but I certainly would not put it low. There's also multiple red switches. And maybe or oh maybe I can grab, I can steal a... It's gonna be really hard to steal a rocket on. We're gonna be very hard to rocket them. But maybe I can, if I can take care of the hit scans with my shells, then I have a chance to survive without the rocket going to this area. 
I really don't have enough room to just spam everything with the rocket launcher on this room. Yes, I know. Not enough room in this room. No pun intended. Great, you teleport me back out into the lava. Into the damn... Straight on top of the damaging floor. This is one mean-spirited ultimate doom map that makes me wonder what elf kill is. Unless this is a refinement of elf kill, which Steve didn't make me think that, in addition to reminding me of hell beneath vaguely, this, this level, especially this area, because it has the same texture, reminds me a little bit of speed from Plutonia, although it's clearly meant to be played somewhat faster than that misnomer of a title is. Maybe one day I'll do Plutonia with the sound, with the custom soundtrack and the weapons match from Final Dumo, perhaps. I couldn't imagine a Steve D who is not a fan of Plutonia just looking at maps like these. You can you run if I know if I'm perfect I'm a, if I have perfect time precision and my timing can I escape? Yes! I can escape if I have some perfect precision and my timing. But all that says is, you're too lenient, Steve! If you opened up the Baron's heel, I probably have no chance at escaping. See, the Baron's open up when I'm grabbing the yellow key. I'm thinking. Maybe in order... How can this... So maybe instead of the pillar automatically lowering, put a switch where that green ammo is. That will make it pretty tough to get out on time. Oh, but still not totally impassable. Or maybe raise the yellow key as close to the ceiling as possible and have its pillow only slowly lower instead of fast lower. That will cost me a good extra second. Perhaps do that combined with putting a switch behind the mega ammo. So raise, raise the pillow as close to the lights as possible such that I can still see there's a yellow key there and put a switch right over here that lowers it and have it lower slowly instead of quickly so I have to wait an extra second or two for it to lower and that should give the Baron's time to flack me and prevent an easy escape. I'm just not doing the easy escape at the moment to see what is this like if you don't cheese it. It's brutal, that's what it's like, but it's meant to be brutal. I also do need to make sure I grab the ammo because that'll help extend my... So I really need to... Those Keiko Demons flack me quickly. So I really need to... Put the pressure on those bare ones so I can 
Or maybe they're meant to run away from the Barons, but there still should be something else preventing me from just escaping the level. Let me see, can I? Yeah, because those Keiko Demons... Maybe I need to... Maybe I need to thin out the crowd of Keiko Demons first. But then the bear ones are gonna get really close to me. Nope, that's not a good way of doing it. Shooting a rocket into the wall when I'm way too close is most certainly, however, not a good way of doing it. So once the bear ones spread out, I kind of have to just kill them all. Maybe I need to focus my attention away from the bear ones and towards the Keiko demons once the Keiko demons are close enough. Again, I'm assuming Steve doesn't want me just running out of here. Maybe he does just want me to hightail out. Maybe that's the only way to handle this. The question though is you need... Well, the bear one's getting me stuck here isn't gonna be any good. Because so far I found hightailing to be the only thing that... Well, okay, if I can get that, if I can get to the outside and not be pinned by the bear ones with the Keiko demons, it's manageable. All you need to do is probably not change the timing at all in reality, but put some more meat in front of the exit so that to impede the movement of the player. Doom 1, your monsters are limited. But maybe put two bell, maybe stuff two bear ones in the exit. That would be a stout. And give two extra boxes of rockets by the yellow key to handle them. Because the only seemingly manageable way to get everyone dead is to flee the bear ones in the close quarters. Leave the bear ones when the Keiko demons are going to arrive at me from both sides. Well that was it. A fun level all things said I just I think the ending needs a little tweaking so that to make it extremely difficult to just run away like I did sometimes. Not quite as easy as it was in Deadlock if you get the blue key last, but it's still a bit easy and you're always going to get the yellow key last in this level. You do have to pick the two keys up in a predefined order. Now I am calling that I think the hardest Amiga demo party map so far and I did not expect that compared compared a me gut demo pout and I did not expect that given it's an ultimate doom map but maybe it should have because Steve has thrown his teeth in ultimate doom before and this one was a very satisfying ramp so whether it ends in the Amiga demo party proper or in some Amiga demo party style doom one set it's a good map that needs just a little bit more difficulty to evade at the end. You own me and I don't mind one bit. And if you enjoyed this videos or my videos in general, please feel free to I'm welcome to comment. I always appreciate them much. And feel free to make requests. I do take them or at least consider them. They can be your wild or others. And 
should be a subscribe link in the video in the description as well as a link to some other playlists in the description. This is Catcom1 and I'm the Pout Den.